Well, if you've ever wondered what's inside a Tip'em, and I have myself, I've never torn one of these apart, you're on the right channel. Here it is. Off the car, on the bench. What are we looking for? So the input, control to that relay, comes on connector B on the uh, pin number 10. So 14, 13, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I think th that's 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So third pin, bottom row from this side. And the output is that single pin on this connector. So shouldn't be too bad. All we have here is one, two, three, four, five screws. Hopefully these things should just pop out unless these fuses all fall out. But let's take a picture or the layout here and that way I can put it back together correctly. All right, here we go. With the fuses in, take all the screws out. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, now what? <laughs> this thing just... Come up and out or what? Oh, amazing. Ooh, pretty. All right. Whole bunch of logic. I don't see any clicky relays. It's all, all might be power transistors unless they're hiding in here. They might be soldered on the back of this board. So there's our output pin and our input pin was on B. This connector, pin 3. And oh man, that looks like it could be complicated. So if we can trace this pin back to somewhere, it's got some kind of conformal coating on it. You can tear this board off. It looks like it clips in. What a freaking mess. So this goes bad. You just got to replace the whole thing. Fuses and everything, huh? Let me dig into it a little bit. See if we find anything interesting. <laughs> this is hilarious. Looks like Skittles. All the fuses are out. And now, I think we should be able to separate the cover from our circuit board and sure enough there it is and all we have is fuse holders oh my gosh this is insane so no clicky relays it's all solid state transistor drivers terrible so your fuel pump your transmission power feed everything goes through transistors and solder joints terrible terrible design this does not work <laughs> high current stuff through a circuit board with solder joints just a bad idea so let me try to trace this output pin see where that sucker goes see where the control is you can pinpoint it to one of these transistors maybe it's a bad solder joint it would be pretty cool if we could fix it but oh man this is not looking promising nope not good news so I went as far as tracing where does <clears throat> that pin come from what feeds it well with our meter on the beeping scale you can see that pin comes through the board right here And what feeds this guy is these two power transistors. Here and here, they're tied together. Now what turns these guys on? Well, the other, you know, this is the power side. This battery positive over here. It can feed the transmission either through this chip or this chip. And the controls are 
on two different legs. So whatever controls this guy and this guy could be any logic on this board based on the inputs. And the inputs are, well one of them is from the PCM on that pin and I couldn't even start tracing that one. I mean, pin comes through here and then could go anywhere. There are no serviceable components on this board except for some fuses and just fuses. <laughs> so, yeah, Chrysler. Ah, uh, man, this is just frustrating. What was wrong with old school fuses and relays? Nothing. You can replace them one by one, they're cheap. This thing, if it goes bad, you're basically stranded until you get a new one. You're at the mercy of the manufacturers of this board. It is not, you know, a five dollar component that you can buy in an auto parts store. Terrible. And this cheap thing. It's not like a Mercedes or BMW, but the concept is kind of similar. You have to buy the entire circuit board. So that's the diagnosis. I'm going to do some poking online, see if I can locate one. I think you have to program these in. It's just, you know, the diagnosis you can get there, but then you're stuck. So that's it for today. Uh, if the owner decides to let me replace the tip them, it'll be a part two. If not, see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, good luck diagnosing your tip -ums. All right, here we go, last check. Everything's put back together. All the fuses are in the right spot. Battery reconnected. Last check of this. If it's still doing its thing, then no other options. What do we got? Tap, tap, tap. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Uh-oh. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, that's a damn shame. No, no fix. <laughs> yep. Limp mode, not a fix. What if we don't give up this easy? So screw the tip em. All we need to do is, I think, since it's kind of a, a dumb, you know, almost like a relay that's solid state. Why can't we just put a relay in here, like old school? This will be the control wire, and this is the output of the relay. We don't even need to cut the wires, we could just splice it in and, you know, give the relay a feed from battery positive and ground the control side so it'll be power side switched by this green wire, and the output will be on the yellow and orange. So whenever this wire's on, that wire, wire will be on. It's pretty simple, and the tip of it has a sense circuit. Well, even if it doesn't provide its own power, this will still backfeed into the tip -um and, you know, the sense circuit will be happy, I think. I, that might be a really cheap solution to this stupid problem. So, the only variable here is, can that control wire, the green wire from the PCM, carry enough current to turn on an old school relay? Well. Let's see if we can light a test light, 150 milliamps, relay, doesn't take much more than that. So test light to battery ground, if we touch it positive it will light up. Let's touch that control wire see what happens to our voltage and if the light lights up. Sweet, lights up bright. So that PCM has plenty of power to turn on a test light so we can definitely power up an old school relay. I like it. Let's just do that. 
Everyone, it's the following day. Time to at least attempt to fix this PT Cruiser with almost no parts required. Remember part one? Diagnosed? Bad tip -um. Can we work around this and cheat the system without going to the dealer? Here's what I got at the parts store. Just a generic relay kit. This is what I really need. The actual base for it. Some pigtails. Kind of a bonus. We'll put a fuse in there. Maybe uh, bump this down to a 10 amp. And instead of this, I don't know where, <laughs> where this thing is made, I want to put in a genuine Bosch Toyota relay. So this thing should fit right in here. Keyword should. All right, perfect. So how are we going to wire this thing in? Well, let's look at the diagram. Make a game plan. Let's see. So, PCM tip them. PCM sends a power signal to the tip them to say, hey, turn on your solid state relay, whatever power transistor, to send power down and power up a part of the TCM and the solenoid assembly and uh, pressure switches and solenoids inside the transmission. Okay, so the problem is this guy, it's dropping out. Therefore, what we want to do with the relay, let's draw it over here. So four pins, there's our load side. This is going to be our control side. Now, when do we want this relay to turn on? Well, when the PCM tells it to. So I'm going to make a splice right here, right next to the PCM. We already have the harness opened up. And go right to the control side of this relay. Since it's power side switched, this side of the control will be permanently grounded on the body somewhere. So that's two wires. What about the load side? Well, if our battery is up here, plus and minus, we want to take battery positive, put it through a fuse, play it safe, feed this relay. So this is pin 30. This is like 85 and 86. And 87 is our output. What do we want to do to the output? We want to energize all these wires. So what I'm going to do is, now a couple options here. We can either cut the wire. Well, let's see. No, we don't want to cut the wire. <laughs> we either want to cut it up here by the tip -um, like basically remove that feed from the tip -um and replace it with the feed from the relay. Or, since we're already here, we'll just splice it in to that yellow and orange wire. And that way, the PCM says, hey, turn on, the tip will say, okay, I want, you know, turn on here, but our relay will be energized, and that will just send power to where we need it to go. So if this drops out, we won't lose power here. Is this safe? I think it is, because they're both power feeds. It's not like something's going to short, short out or, you know, do what, what it needs to do. So that's the game plan. Very simple. One, two three, four connections. Let's wire it in and see if it works. All right, here's our pigtail. I removed the center wire, we won't need that. And the colors here, the red, pin 30. Yellow to the yellow and orange, right there. Green is gonna be our ground and pin 86. Blue is going to be our control from that light green wire at the PCM. So it should be pretty simple. Let's plug it in. 
All right, the strategy here is to strip a little portion of the insulation from the wire. We don't want to cut it. That's where we're going to splice in our relay and solder, you know, solder these wires in. We're using the HACO. There's an FX88D because people make fun of me for soldering with a butane torch. So since we have electricity, <laughs> let's uh, use this guy. It's pretty cool. You can you can set the temperature and you can, it shows you the real time temperature of the tip. How cool is that? And it warms up super fast. So we got four connections to make. So you can see it's uh, probably already hot enough to melt the solder. Yep. These are like, wires in the kit are super beefy, so they don't really, you know, 10 gauge to 20 gauge is quite the jump, but we don't really care about the aesthetics here. Just want it to hold. Just one, one soldering connection done. Three more to do, and can't wait to try it out. All right, almost there. Three connections I made. There's the light green control wire. The blue is spliced right into it. The green wire is not cut. So that goes to the relay. Then the green off the relay is just grounded right here. And then on the load side, we have a red wire with an eyelet. I just decided to put it right here on the positive battery post. It follows the the big wire that goes to the tipum and comes up here goes through a 10 amp fuse to the load side of the relay and finally this will be our output the yellow so when I turn the key on right now my test light should light I'm just trying to test that the relay functions that the computer can turn it on if that works we'll put the yellow wire splice it to this yellow and orange and this thing should work so let's see if the test light comes on at least. And key on. Beautiful. Key off. Key on. Okay, I like it. Relay works. Alright, here we go. Cross your fingers. Everything's hooked up. The relay's hooked up. Last connection is made. Battery is installed. Everything's plugged in, ready to go. I just left the low cover off so we can do our final verification of repair. Same two channels, blue, channel one on the control, green wire, channel two red, yellow and orange. Output. All right, Pico is booted up. We've got our zero and zero. Let's turn the key. All right, so it's on. Before we start the engine, yeah, it's key on. Okay, we're still good. Let's hop into our scanner. Clear everything out. Start from scratch and take this thing for a spin. Okay. Let's start with a transmission and then we'll go to the engine. Codes only. Actually the computer is, or the battery is disconnected so it shouldn't... There you go, battery was disconnected, stored. Thanks for telling me that. Clear codes, yes. Continue. Back and engine. Codes. No codes present. Fantastic. Let's start it up. Keep looking at our feed. Okay, so that red line 
should not drop until the blue line tells it to drop. And it doesn't matter what the tipum does now, that auxiliary relay will keep feeding the TCM as long as the command is there from the computer. Great. So let's uh, close the hood, take this thing for a spin, see how it shifts, put some miles on it, verify the repair. I think we should be in good shape. So far so good. Our lines are steady. At 12, we made it down the driveway. Let's see how this thing accelerates from zero. Shifting gears. Nice. Beautiful. Time for a little country drive. I love the evenings here in, in the farm country. Very peaceful. Nice weather this week. what our voltages are doing. Both the battery voltage right where they should be. That's it, this thing's fixed. I'm gonna take it around a block, see you back at the shop. All right, we went about 10 trouble-free miles. No glitches, no hiccups. I'm very happy with this repair. No issues. The last thing I want to do is shut her off, scan for codes one last time, and we'll call this one done. <laughs> this is our resident pony that grazes wherever it wants. <laughs> <laughs> Free range. All right, we're back in the garage. Let's shut her down, see what the voltages do. And key off. Perfect. And key on. Love it. Sweet. Let's just do a quick verification. No codes in the engine. Uh, no, hopefully no codes in the transmission. Awesome. And last but not least, let's just double check that tip them. Make sure we didn't mess anything up. Love it. That's it. Hope you enjoyed that case study. So we diagnosed a bad tip them, and we didn't need one. How about that? Almost no parts required. <laughs> Just the relay and some soldering. But uh, I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the totally integrated power module. There's nothing wrong with the old school relays where you can replace one for you know 10 bucks instead of, if something goes wrong, one of those drivers goes bad, you're done, you gotta pay 600 bucks to the dealer. And these things are failure prone. So, <laughs> failure prone and expensive. Not a good combination. But hopefully that Toyota Relay will outlast this Chrysler. I am so confident in my repair, I'll give this guy a one year warranty. And I think he'll be happy. So thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Almost forgot, a little bonus footage. So how would you charge for this diagnosis and repair? So the diagnosis was, hey, you need to tip them. When you're calling a bad module, it always takes more time than you know finding a wiring problem or not always, but <laughs> you have to be really sure to call a $600 module or more expensive, right? Rather than like calling a you know, solenoid or something that costs $40. So in this case, I'm charging two hours for diagnostics. That includes all the test driving, tearing apart the tip them, looking for that bad driver, all that stuff, two hours. And then for the repair, I'm going to say an hour and a half. It was some custom wiring, you know, insulation, 
and then like 30 bucks for the relay kit. So mostly labor on this one. Let me know if you think that's fair. Still way cheaper than buying a new tip and going to the dealer. Uh, and the car is fixed. It has a guarantee. So uh, I think the customer will be very, very pleased about this. And uh, that's it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.